Starting off the list at number 15 is this neutral patriotic sign. Neutral except for the blue bow. Project number four, black and white home sign. So I'm so sad. I missed a whole bunch of footage at the beginning of this craft. So I'm just going to show you this is the sign that I used. It's black on the back and it has this ray in the front. And I used the front because I couldn't get the tag off. And I just gave it a couple coats of uh, chalk paint, white chalk paint or Adirondack chalk paint. And you could still kind of see the, the white writing, but it wasn't super noticeable and I knew he was going to do stuff on top of it. So I lapped it at two coats and then I did words with both my Cricut and with a stencil. So, and I did so good with the Cricut too. I really wanted to show you guys, but um, I did each word separate and then placed them down, you know, sort of organically the way I thought looked best. I chose this rope as the border because of the black and white that seemed to be the theme. But before I could put that on, I wanted to just soften it up and give it this kind of distress treatment because the bottom words are actually lighter color than the top. So I kind of wanted to make them more similar. Um, then I moved on to the bow. The first part of the bow was just a loop glued together and cinched in the middle. And then I made this awareness shape and gathered it up in the middle, tied some of that nice looking jute round and round. And then I did that again to tie the two bows together. And you have the little double bow there, if I can actually hold on to it. <laughs> All right, so before I could put that bow on, I needed to work on that border. So as soon as I do a couple of tight knots here on the back, I'm going to set the bow to the side and I'm going to start hot gluing the black and white rope. And just because this is a, like, this is a pretty simple craft, but we shouldn't, you know, rush through it just because it's simple. So I take my time getting the rope done and I give it a little twist as I'm gluing to keep it um, tight and together. And I don't even, you don't even have to glue like the whole strand. Like I just glue a little bit, hold it, glue a little bit, hold it. And then when I get to the corners, I actually take, you know, a little bit longer to hold the shape of the corner. And um, it's worth it because I like how it turns out. It doesn't round out the corners like uh, is possible if you just kind of glue it and let go right away. So finishing up here, I forgot I had some cricket stars that I made. I'm just putting them randomly in the bottom words there. And then I'll pop a few at the top. And there wasn't any really rhyme or reason to this. I just wanted to use a few stars and uh, I thought a few at the top there look good right next to the bow. I don't often do corner bows, so I felt like maybe I needed to balance it out. You'll see I already hung, uh, already put a jute twine on there. Um, I did it vertically like this because the holes were already there. So I just used more of that jute twine that I like for the hanging rope. And then I hot glued the bow and then that's it. And I'll give you a better view at the final reveal. And number 14 is another almost neutral project. This sweet love wall hanging. So before we start the video, I just wanted to show you this cordless glue gun. The makers of the glue gun reached out to me and asked me if they fur furnished me with a glue gun that I would do a review. And I agreed to do so. It's cordless and it stands up. And that right there is a big selling point. So wall hangings. This video is all about wall hangings and the five easy steps to get a perfect wall hanging. You have the blank, the background, the focal point, the border, and then the embellishments. And if you remember those five things, you'll come out with a perfect wall hanging every time. So here I'm taking the mirror apart. The mirror is my blank, the sheet music is my background, and the mirror border 
is my wall hanging border. So right there I have the three things that you remember. Underneath the mirror you'll see the poster board letters. I'm going to use those to make my focal point which is the word love, L-O-V-E, and I'm going to do it like the home signs and I'm going to put it in the middle of the background. So I'm using the glue gun for the first time here and there's a few bubbles but the glue comes out really nice. Um, it just feels like it's gliding out. Like um, you um, have to keep pressing, like uh, press in and let go, press in and let go, but it glides out really nice. It has a good glide feeling to it. And I'm using it to glue the sheet music to the cardboard and I'm just going to leave the mirror in there. I'm not going to mess around with. I kind of liked that I had something flat and sturdy in there instead of just the cardboard. So I go all around the edges there. And you see how I just put the glue gun through the border? Because I, because I could, because there's nothing attaching it to anything. It's not plugged in where all my other tools are plugged in and stuff is not falling on the floor or getting tangled up. It's fantastic. Just that factor alone that it's cordless, you know, is a huge selling point for me. But also, um, it's a nice quality glue gun. I really do like it. And I'll be using it um, in other videos, but you do need to be careful if you have it on for a long time. It does lose its charge. Like, you can't use it all day on one charge. Like, what I would do is after each project, I would turn it off. And if I'm not going to do the project right away, I'll plug it in and charge it again. Because I tried doing, I think I tried doing two projects. And towards the end of the second project, um, the light went out. And that's another thing that I like is there's a light. But anyways, I put some Mod Podge on those love letters. Uh, you can um, put those down and pull them up a few times. But you want to be careful to not press them down well unless you're absolutely sure they're where you want them to be. I don't normally use Mod Podge, but I used it with the sticker letters because I didn't want them to come up. Now I made a bow using the awareness shape, cinched it tight, wrapped twine around the middle, and then dovetailed the ends. I grabbed some Dollar Tree lavender in white and purple, and that's gonna be attached to the bow and this is number five. This is the last thing you need to remember when you're making wall hanging or wall art, and that's embellishment. And sometimes the border and embellishment, you know, come together. And um, in this instant, it kind of does. The embellishment is going to be glued to the border. So I actually glued, uh, put some glue on the tag just to get an idea if it was still coming out, you know, because first time being used. And I noticed it was pretty hot, so I decided to use my um, glue finger. Now the makers of this glue gun don't say whether the temperature of this glue gun is high temp or low temp, but they do say it's between 80 and 140 Celsius, which is right up there with high temp glue guns, according to my research on Google. And here I'm just going to pinch the flowers together. So I have two purple and one white on either side. And I didn't even wrap any separate twine around them. I'm actually just going to glue them to the back of this bow. And I put down a healthy dose of glue there. Then the flowers are just going to be pressed right into that glue because I, again, put the healthy dose down. And while I'm holding them and the glue is still setting, I'm going to go ahead and wrap the twine around and further adhere it to the back of the bow. Once I've done that, I 
tie a double knot and then those flowers are not going anywhere and you see I use the stand up feature of the glue gun um, and I'm loving it <laughs> really loving it I'm going to have all the information on um, the makers of the glue gun and where you can purchase the glue gun down in my description box it's an uh, Amazon company and you can purchase the glue gun um, in a pretty box off of Amazon there we go I finally finished messing around with the bow and the flowers I'm gonna put another healthy dose of the glue on the border here right in the top I kind of eyeballed it but I basically just want it right over top of the word love and that's all I'm using to adhere this bow and flowers is the glue. And then I put some vertical beads of glue and some horizontal beads of glue to get the hanging rope to adhere to the back. And there you have it. There's the love wall art. And I'll show you more at the final review. Project number 13 is called Flowers on the Wall. I transformed some metal votive candle holders into a decorative wall hanging. And lastly, this is their version. And project number five is my version, Flowers on the Wall. These are metal um, votive candle holders in the shape of a flower. And when I saw the flowers on the Wayfair site, I knew that I could use them to make something similar, um, but a little different, a little, um, maybe a little more artistic, a, a, just a little more to it. And um, this is probably the most expensive of all the projects, a dollar each for the flowers, plus a dollar for this uh, board that I'm going to use to hang it, and another dollar for the ribbon transfers. So that's five dollars. Um, so I was going to spray paint them white and then paint them um, gray, a gray concoction, but I ran out of white. So I found some gray and I spray painted the board and all three flowers. And now I, um, I was just digging through my stash, seeing what I could add onto it. And I found these rub-on transfers that I hadn't used yet. And I thought, oh, how pretty, because it's not in your face, but it's going to just add a little extra element. Um, after I was done with that, I um, I believe I mixed up like black, white, gray, and a little bit of red because in the original picture, the middle is darker. And then since I didn't have silver paint, just gray, I decided to like um, almost cartoonish paint the... Um, edges of the top petals of the flower white because if you notice in the picture there that's where a big reflection is from the silver so what it's basically like a fake reflection and did the exact same thing for all three flowers i'm showing you the first one here and i believe i did two coats of that and this is our the artesa paint this is a little bit different than the normal acrylic paint I use. This is Arteza and it's a gloss finish instead of a matte like my Magic Fly acrylic paints. All right so I did not do the back of them. I didn't feel the need to and I didn't have a whole lot of paint so once these were done I uh, actually noticed there was a hole in the back. I didn't even realize so I threaded the jute uh, cord through the hole and then I tied a knot and brought it up to the back of the board and used my heavy duty stapler to staple it in there. And I just kind of played with the length of the strings there, or the length of the twine. And once I decided on um, how I wanted it to be like longer, all different lengths or shorter in the middle, once I decided that, um, I just trimmed it accordingly and decided to leave the two on the outside edges. And now we have the final reveal. And these are the pumpkins with the tags. And 
some lovely close-ups. I love those takes. It's like my favorite part. And our uh, desktop wreaths. This is pretty. The, that picture is my favorite. And our artistic uh, glue embossed art piece. Eggs and bacon. Last but certainly not least, we were back to those flowers, and I just love how they turned out. They pop uh, really nicely on a white wall like that. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a big thumbs up. See you soon. Project number 12 is this fun patriotic rainbow. Project number three, Boho Vintage Patriotic Rainbow. I don't know if there is such a thing, but if there is, this is it. So it's just a quick little project here. I got this from Dollar Tree uh, back when it was still a dollar. And I decided to leave the paper on so I could follow the guidelines. I don't know if that was a good idea or not, but I go ahead and just sand it, rough it up a bit so the paint stays on. And I really don't like how it felt uh, to paint on the paper. So um, things like distressing um, just was, wasn't what I was used to. So, um, you know, if I had to do it again, I, I might have just used the back and done my own um, divisions in between the arches there. So anyway, I'm, you'll see me counting. I'm trying to make sure blue, white, red, and natural. So you'll see me add in the brown for the natural. And I got a strip of white there to divide it from the next color. And so on and so on. <laughs> so I actually craft really slow because the first thing I do when I'm editing is speed everything up. So you can imagine how slow it is if this is warp speed. See, I was checking to make sure I had the right number of colors for the arches there. So we're just gonna get our colors on. And this is just, I'm gonna speed through this and edit a bunch out. It's just getting the colors in the right spot. And then once I'm done with that, I'll pop on some stars. And there's something at the end of this project that I didn't show you in the beginning that I decide to do. And uh, I'm just gonna let you watch. So this is before sanding and distressing. You can see how dark the brown came out. I really didn't like that. So I took a uh, white and I added, oh, I'm adding some blue because the blue I used was chalk paint. It was rather dull. Um, so I'm adding some acrylic blue because it's a little bit brighter. I forgot about that. So yeah, that's the first thing I do because I'm looking at it going, whoa, this is like so dark. This, this is like boring and unattractive and I'll be the first to admit it did look unattractive so get that nice bright blue there and then I'm going to do the distressing then I took a break and printed up some stars off of my Cricut Joy and I got to thinking that the rainbow is kind of plain we needed to zhuzh it up and if you seen my previous uh, video, I did a boho neutral rainbow. 
and I had lots of lace hanging from the bottom edges so I pulled out my red white blue and natural colored strings and twine and ribbon and decided to add on to this so you'll see me um, using the Cricut Joy stars just like stickers and I just printed up two just two random sizes I knew I wanted smaller ones in the middle but um, I think I measured it at like an inch and as long as it was under an inch I was fine with that so um, I wasn't even sure if I would have enough to be honest with you and I thought I'll just do the same on each side, so one on the bottom, one on the bottom of the other side, and back and forth like that. And then I just got to trim, and I chose about 12 inches, because I like that size. I've used that uh, length in some of my other projects. And then these are all burlap ribbons, wired burlap ribbons. So what I did is um, cut two lengths and trimmed the wired edges and then cut the actual ribbon in half. So I'd have two, two lengths to go. So I, I, I just thought that was a cool idea because it matched all the colors. Like it just came to me because I knew I had red, white, and blue ribbon and I haven't really used it a lot. So I always think it's important to do a dry fit. And so that's what I'm doing right here. I'm putting uh, everything down and just making sure I like the way it looks. And right away I realized um, the strings were gonna have to be in the front and the ribbons in the back. There wasn't gonna be any mixing them around. So I'm glad that I did the dry fit because I figured that out. So just a little dab of hot glue for each of the strings and each of the ribbon lengths. And then I'm gonna do one just to ensure that everything is adhered great. We need a hanging rope here. I just used some plain Dollar Tree twine. And you'll get a better look at this at the final reveal. Project number 11 is this Faith, Hope, Love cutting board. I did a whole video for a five under five playlist. All five projects were cutting boards and two of them made the top 15. And this is one of them. Project number two, faith, hope, love. So I'm taking an old cutting board and I'm giving it a new life. It wasn't just gently used, it was majorly used and there was just no fixing it. I tried glue and clamps and sanding. So in the end, I just um, sanded it so, so there wouldn't be any possibility of slivers and flipped it over and started working on the back or the bottom, I guess. Um, I sanded it a little bit just to uh, get it clean because I couldn't think of any other way to clean it. And um, I have this sheet of stickers that I got at Dollar Tree and I actually checked um, before I started doing this and one sheet of stickers gave me all three words. So it was meant to be. I start with the middle word. I use the ruler and a pen. Don't use a ruler and a pen. Just use some painter's tape. It's really the best. I always use painter's tape. Um, I tried using just a ruler this time and I didn't like it. It didn't really work. Um, it was supposed to look centered, but it ended up looking more like it was um, starting on the left. But still okay. So I went with it. Um, after I got them down uh, off camera, I did a thin layer of Mod Podge and that dried in a couple minutes. <clears throat> and then I came in with this um, Cottage White Chalk Paint by Folk Art. And um, I thought I was just going to give it a nice, gentle one coat of paint, but um, you could just see the brush strokes too much. So I ended up giving it two. That's what you see here. And I pulled out some ribbon because I had the thought that the words were going to look like they were lonely. <laughs> um, I just figured I needed a border. Um, 
and this is Dollar Tree ribbon as well. So um, the cutting board is still drying a little bit, so I'm going to work uh, with the ribbon. I'm going to make two loops, and I did this in my previous video, I believe, just on a small scale this time. Um, so two loops, just um, hot glue them together, and then I put them together um, like an X. So I hot glued them like an X and then I took the ribbon and made an awareness shape and then I scrunched it together and made a bow and put that awareness bow on top of the X and just cinched it nice and tight with some twine. I set that to the side and started working on the letters. Now I don't know if I should not have used Mod Podge or if I should have let it dry longer. It's kind of gummy, like a little bit gummy, um, thick. So it, it was tedious. I did not show you a lot of it. But here we have Faith, Hope, Love. And we definitely do not have a crisp finish. So my thought is just to go in and sand down to the wood on the edges. And then I took, uh, ripped off a little piece of sandpaper and actually sanded over the words to smooth out the unevenness so it wasn't as noticeable. And I actually kind of like how it looks. It almost looks intentional. I did go in with a tiny little um, paintbrush and just paint like a few little dabs here and there just to get the shape of the letter that I was happy with. And then putting down the ribbon is just as easy as a bead of hot glue and trimming it at the corners. And then I took the little bow that I made there previous that just kind of yanked on all the ends and poofed it up and hot glued it right in the corner there. I debated using this uh, wood flower bud from Dollar Tree. It looks pretty good. It might be a little too big, but I like it. And I'll show you a better look at the final reveal. Project number 10 is this sweet little Give a Thanks shelf sitter. It was made for a fall themed video and I just love it with the little f fall florals and I really didn't want to put it away but Christmas came. Project number one, Give Thanks shelf sitter. I'm going to start things off by faux staining the wood here. I'm using a combination of two different browns. I mix it together with a broken skewer. And I'm just going to use a wet wipe to apply it to all the nooks and crannies, front side and back. And I'll do the same with the cube, front side, back, bottom, and a little bit on the inside. And that's just out of habit. You're not going to see the inside or the bottom. But uh, that crafter in me just wants to make everything cohesive and finished. And even though it's not completely visible, you know, I know it's not finished. All right, so when I'm done faux staining here, I'm also going to use a wet wipe to put some celery colored chalk paint on the leaves. And the Canadian girl in me chose the maple leaf because I didn't have room for both. Maple leaf is, of course, my favorite leaf because I am from Canada and the maple leaf is on the Canadian flag. I just used my wet wipe to pat the paint onto the leaf and it dries pretty fast when you do it this way. I'm going to do use the same method when I put the color on the words, but I'll use the cottage white chalk paint on the words. And dabbing it on like this, I, I just, I like the look, I like the finish, but it also dries a lot faster as well. And it just pops on that faux stain. It looks so good. I am so happy with how it came out. And then I like the color of the leaf. It um, 
it's a natural color, the celery color, but it's not like in your face color as far as fall colors go. And there's nothing wrong with the beautiful reds and yellows. Um, but this video is about using more muted and neutral colors. Once the paint dries, I'm going to go ahead and use wood glue and hot glue to adhere the words. And I just tapped out some uh, wood glue onto paper towel there and used a stick to apply it to the words. And then for the leaf, I'm going to use that same Amherst wood glue. And I'm not going to bother with the hot glue on the leaf. I just used it the wood glue because it's such a small amount it dry nice and fast and then here again using the wood glue hot glue combination on the cube you'll also notice I put some floral foam in there I filled it about half full I don't usually fill my containers all the way with the foam usually about halfway three quarters these are some florals that I chose that were a little muted a little neutral and I will use the, the greens first, but I slowed down the camera here so I could show you the packaging that those little pumpkins came in. And uh, I have the orange pumpkins in my hand there. I'm not sure if you can see it, it's almost out of frame. And then some green and brown pumpkins on the left hand, in the left hand corner there. And I'm gonna make little floral picks out of those and add them to the arrangement in the cube. So the best way to do this is to squeeze the pumpkin, make the fabric taut, and then give the pointy end of the skewer a big push, and I kind of like wiggled it in there. If you wanted to pierce the bottom of the pumpkin with something before the skewer, that would pr probably make it a little bit easier, but um, I just used the sharp end of the skewer and pulled the fabric tight, and it, that worked for me. Um, don't use hay like I'm using here. You don't need to and it just disintegrates like it just falls apart and um, I wanted to try it and I tried it and it's just a big old mess and it's not necessary. So go ahead and leave that um, part out if you decide to do this. So I like putting the greens down first. These uh, were eucalyptus buds and leaves that I got from Amazon and it came together. And then once I had the base down, I got my florals in there and you'll notice I have the little pumpkins in there as well. And this came out so cute. I'm gonna give you a better look at, of it at the final reveal. Project number nine is this sunglasses caddy. I had a lot of people singing the title of this project and it's so versatile. I really didn't want to put it away at the end of summer. Project number two, cheap sunglasses caddy. Yes, it was a song, but it's also something to keep those cute beach glass sunglasses going all summer. So I'm using some Cricut items that vinyl I got from Dollar Tree. This handle came from Hobby Lobby. I think someone gave it to me. Um, the sign, the blank, is a false sign from Dollar Tree. So I put some paint on the back of the handle so I could mark the holes where we're going to screw it in. And then I drilled in with my trusty little... Uh, it's a smaller size drill because I have some physical limitations and the man size drill we had just wasn't cutting it. So. Um, I got those drilled in and I got the vinyl put down, which was super easy. It went on super easy. And um, then I flipped it over and um, got the handle screwed in. I changed the drill from a drill bit to a screwdriver bit and got the handle on there. I noticed it was a little bit uh, wiggly because they weren't really the right size screws. So there was a little bit of give um, I took an old paintbrush and got some E6000 under there and then I actually left that overnight uh, before I messed around with it again. 
So um, the next day I come in and I'm quite happy with how the handle is. So I'm going to work on the Cricut words. And I actually designed these myself. I put a curve on the words cheap and sunglasses. And then I borrowed an image from um, Cricut Design Space and just sized it for the words using the um, measurements from the sign. So I was quite proud of myself. So I'm just gonna put it right at the very, very top because I'm not doing a bow or anything on this, so I don't need to leave any room. I'm gonna use the original hanger and it's right at the very top. So this can um, go right above everything and it's not gonna be in the way and you're still gonna be able to read it. And it got that nice little point on the top of the sign blank, so it's perfect to be able to center the words. So I was quite happy for that. And this actually is working out quite nicely for me tonight. Every All the words and the transfer tape and everything is actually cooperating and doing what I needed to do. And not one little bit of frustration, like, from just a few weeks ago, it's gotten that much better using the cricket words. So I got that. That that was just like a little sticker. I actually just took the sunglass shape right off and then used my cricket tool to uh, get rid of the little bubbles. So I'm going to take the word. I'm going to pull the background away. There's very little to weed. Um, I'll put the name of the font in my description box because I forget, but I really like this font because it's wide and there's not very much to weed. I got it down on the transfer tape, no problem. And then I just, I was like counting the words there. I was like, da, 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 and uh, trying to figure out which words were supposed to be in the middle. And I did figure it out, got it down, used my Cricut tool, and then just a nice slow pull off. And we are done with the embellishment part of this project. So my, when my girls were little, we would always like stop at the souvenir store, the drugstore, and get those fun little sunglasses. But they never really lasted. But you know, maybe a few outings, and they got lost or sat on or broken. So this little cheap sunglasses caddy is my solution to that for summer sunglasses. Um, at the last minute here, I decide I want this little uh, crate to uh, be similar to the coloring on the handle. So I'm gonna give it some folk art cottage white water down paint. And I'm only doing the front and the sides. I wanna do the back because it's gonna to have to be glued and I want the bare wood for that. And then I'm gonna use the Magic Fly Black acrylic paint and a Dollar Tree chip brush. I, I actually got that in my last haul, two chip brushes for $1.25. And I'm just gonna do that like I like to distress by starting at the corners there and pulling the brush across. I don't know why I do it like that. I just started doing it like that and I just really like how it looks. Um, I do go in after and uh, paint the back inside of the crate because I noticed it was kind of noticeable that it was wood color. So you, you won't see me do that, but full disclosure, I did do that. Okay, so we're almost finished here. I'm uh, putting a little bit of E6000 down where I'm gonna put the, the thumbtack or pin. It's a black a ball with a, a long um, sharp pin on it. And I thought it would look cool if uh, it seemed like the crate was hanging from the pin. It's not really but um, I put the crate where I wanted and pulled the rope up and that's how I decided where to put the pin. It was pretty easy. And then I have this cute little um, half size hammer that I used to get it in and watch what I did. So I go to pick the sign up and move it around and it's stuck to the board underneath. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, anyways, back to finishing up here. I had some E6000 on there already, so now I'm finishing up with a little bit of hot glue. Figuring out the placement, making sure the rope is in the right place, getting it nice and snug around the pin, putting the original hanger back, 
And that is our cheap sunglasses caddy. And I'm going to show you what it looks like while it's being used, and then I'll give you a closer look of it at the final reveal. Project number eight is this patriotic flag holder. I made this uh, wood flag holder just off the top of my head. It came out fantastic. We left it outside long after Memorial Day and July 4th. We just loved how it looked. Project number one, tabletop flag holder. So we have some spare lumber, uh, this dog sign from Dollar Tree, a uh, star ornament from Amazon, and some folk art, shock paint, and magic fly acrylic paint. So we're going to prepare the wood for painting. So I've sanded it down, took off the stickers, and now I'm mixing together some chalk paint and acrylic paint to get the color that I want. And I'm I'm not going to be messy, but I'm I'm going to make it look old. I want to make it look old, like it's been stored in the attic and then brought out for a couple months every year when you need some Americana. And uh, it's going to hold a flag. It's a flag holder. And so every year, I, in my mind, the owners would every year get new flags and use this over and over again to display their flags. You know, whether it was a cookout or dining room table. So we're just gonna get some paint down, uh, just one coat, and we'll actually send that down afterwards to make it the color that we really want. And get some white paint down on that star, and then I'm gonna send down these colors to make them look old. When I'm happy with this sanding job, I'm gonna attach the star to the blue portion. And I actually used E6000 and hot glue. So uh, long-term hold with the E6000 and short-term with the hot glue. So I can keep working. So I saw established 1776 on a lot of patriotic, uh, Americana type photos and Pinterest and uh, Google. So I decided USA established 1776. It'd be just a nice, normal, uh, something to put on this. And I remembered to use the transfer tape this time and not try and do it just all on its own. And I also remembered to fill the space. Last time I used a uh, Cricut, I, my word looked small. So this time I made sure to do some measurements in, uh, make the, the words fill the space. So I used the Dollar Tree da Dabber or Pouncer, however you want to call it. And uh, my white, uh, my chalk paint is like super, super thick. So I just kind of glob it on um, any other paint and I would be more careful and not put so much on the, on the dabber or the little sponge there. But, um, this paint for some reason. <laughs> this is really good for stenciling, so it's not so much that it bled through, it actually just kind of like there was just so much of it, it just kind of oozed out a little bit. But uh, I'm learning how to use my Cricut and I'm learning how to weed, so I'm already happy with how this looks. And you know, it, it may not be much to a lot of people, but uh, it's a little bit of professionalism for me. So this is just uh, the, the flag, flag holder portion of the craft. And um, you know, I could have put a vase there or I could have put something more substantial. Um, or a bigger hole and everything, but I chose to just um, look at the thickness of the flag there 
and then just choose a drill bit and make the hole and the first one was way too small so I'm going in and I'm doing it on a little bit of an angle because um, in the sketch that I made for this the flag was sort of um, standing like sideways or not sideways but it had a slant to it so I got the hole drilled and everything and again I'm just going in with E6000 and hot glue and I'm pushing the blue block all the way to the end of the red block so I leave that space just like that and in goes the flag and there you have tabletop decor so this is a tabletop flag holder and I'll show you a better view of it at the final reveal. Coming in at number seven is this boho themed hanging mirror. Project number two, boho neutral hanging mirror. We start off with a few things from Dollar Tree. I have this decorative nautical rope, the jute twine, and the small wooden cubes that are about half the size of tumbling tower block. I also have these wooden beads, but I purchased those off Amazon and it was a package with various sizes. I believe my larger size here is 20 millimeter. The black uh, a circular thing you see there was the border for the mirror, which I've taken off. I'm just going to use the plain mirror. I have this circle that I purchased from the thrift store for 25 cents, and that's going to be our base. So to start, I need, uh, well, I need, I want, I want my small beads to be like a whitewash, and then I want the black ones to be pretty dark. I want them to take on uh, a lot more color than the white ones did. So I keep adding paint to water and stirring until I'm happy with the coverage. And then I'm just going to glove up and get them out of there and set them aside to dry. So while we're waiting for that, we're going to get the mirror attached to the cardboard. And I use E6000 on two blocks and hot glue on two blocks. And it doesn't matter which ones. It's, you just want the immediate hold and the long-term hold. And I'm using blocks because I want the mirror raised because... We're going to put uh, the rope and the beads around it, and I don't want it to get lost in that. So I'm just taking my time here because I don't want to get glue all over the place. And I check and make sure... I believe I had to smoosh it over just a little bit. Um, but I'm going to put that paper on there so we don't get the mirror all messed up. Um, here I'm finishing up the beads. I actually put them on floral wire instead of twine. And I just do a little spiral at the end so they don't fall off. And I'll make a more permanent uh, knot at the end when I attach them to the mirror. So I mix together Adirondack and Castle Folk Art chalk paint. And uh, that, that made a nice color for the border. I wanted to dull down that silver. Next, I'm going to go ahead and make three tassels for the decoration, kind of like um, the, the Dreamcatcher inspired wall hangings that we see a lot. Um, instead of feathers, I'm doing tassels. So, you know, I like my tassels on a doubled up rope with a, uh, it's actually a lark's head knot if you're familiar with macaray, but it's basically just a loop and I pull the loop through it and then pull the tails through the loop and it just, it's less knots to worry about. So I noticed I had a couple extra beads and I decided to add those to the tassels. Uh, just make them more visible. Uh, I decided on three tassels because I thought that was going to look best with this size of mirror. And the tassels, I, th I believe I wrapped it 20 times around a piece of cardboard and then um, cut cut off the ends and fixed them all up and made them all pretty. 
and here I'm just gluing them and I'm I'm bringing the the rope for the tassels up underneath the mirror so I can glue them and it just kind of disappears because I'm going to have the decorative rope and beads over top of it anyway so it it's not going to show so just a nice even bead of glue there and then I'm going to work on the getting the the beads on the floral wire there and uh, basically what I do is just pull a piece of wire through the last bead and then pull on it to get it as tight as possible and then I'll just twist the bead around at the end so it's not visible. So I put down the E6000 and without thinking I put the hot glue down the same way and then I realized what the heck <laughs> that's like way too much hot glue it's just gonna get cold and not work so I got rid of that and went back again with a smaller amount of hot glue and that was fine and here you see me twisting the bead so we can make the floral wire disappear in the back I'm just going to wrap it right around hot glue at the top and bottom and we got the E6000 on the sides and unfortunately uh, my I, I don't know why but my the number of beads was off and I end up having to take a small bead off and now I have two black beads right next to each other there but hopefully that's not going to be super visible there's not really anything I can do about it and then next I'll do the decorative nautical rope and then after that the black and white uh, cotton twisted rope I actually sketched this out beforehand and decided that that's what's going to look best beads nautical rope black and white rope. I also was going to um, embellish it at the end with some jute twine at the top, bottom, side and side, but after I finished it, I looked at it and I thought, oh, this just looks kind of messy. Like it just, I think the jute twine is just, uh, was just a little too thin and gathered up. It just, it didn't look right. So I took that off and deleted the footage so I can pretend that it never actually happened. This beautiful black and white rope came from Amazon. It was $14.99 for 50 feet and it's just gorgeous and soft and I just love it. I'll show you how I finished this mirror at the final reveal. Project number six on this top 15 list is this twig seahorse. The twigs are supposed to mimic driftwood. I have a beach themed bathroom that this fit right in. I actually had a framed seahorse picture in it already. So I see this every day, all the time, many times a day, and I am still in love with it. Project number one, twig seahorse wall decor. So Cindy from Monarch Mom did this originally and she just she's getting the crown she did not do a background on hers but i chose to do a background because i have some beautiful turquoise walls in my background and i just wanted to um, match them up so these are all from dollar tree the netting the wood wreath the seahorse i just found on a random shelf like someone had just tossed it and decided against it and then i have this valentine tag sign left over and it's a little bit taller than some of the other tag signs i have and it does have some glitter, so I was like, ugh, trying to decide what I wanted to do with it. Um, I mean, I was gonna sand it, and then I'm like, no, because the glitter's gonna be everywhere then. So I decided to cover it, or encase it, if you will. And to do that, I grabbed some Dollar Tree gift wrap and uh, one of the small Dollar Tree glue sticks. And the glue stick just smears on and hold wonderfully it's like no fuss mod podge it's fantastic i love it so i just cut to size and got that glue stick and i did the edges first you want to make sure you get the edges all the way um that way that even if you don't get the middle get the edges <laughs> so i got the edges and then i may was careful not to slide the glue gun through the glitter areas so you'll see I go around the heart and I go around that little decor on the little moped there and then I come back and do
do the edges again because I want to make sure. And it's literally as simple as that. I'm going to grab the gift wrap and uh, find the space, find the, the place I want it, which in this case is at the very, very top. And then I'll just literally just place it, smooth it, done. And I come back after and trim the edges. So I flip it over and I start with my ombre painting effect here. And I just chose some blues and turquoises because that matches my bathroom. And um, I, I, I'm using like one brush for the color and then I take a bristle brush to try and blend in the, the different um, colors. So a lot of the blend goes way up into the painting of the, the new color. And I realized I wanted a good uh, area of turquoise at the very, very top. So I stopped my blending here and I get to the top and um, just do a nice area of turquoise there. And then once I have that done, I take that bristle brush and I do some more blending and then I set it aside to dry. Next, I'm just gonna put a little bit of white on this yours because I just don't want it wood when I'm putting twigs on. And you'll see a little bit of green there. I used a brush that had green on it, silly me. So put that aside and now we're gonna break down this wood wreath into twigs. So I'm making twigs. <laughs> and when Cindy from Monarch Mom did, I was like, oh my gosh, that looks like so hard work and such, you know, tedious work. But I mean, it really wasn't hard. It broke apart like anything and maybe it was a little bit tedious, but uh, you know, I kind of get into it like stuff like this. Like I didn't even have any music or TV on or nothing. I was just like sitting here making twigs and it's kind of like doing a puzzle, but you're making the pieces as you go. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm painting on the glue because the cap on my glue is messed up. And I think it actually helped because you don't over apply the glue and it's more precise. It was a little bit kind of gloopy, gloppy, because it's old and it doesn't have the proper cap on it. So, you know, the air is getting to it and everything. But it worked and it worked really well, actually. Um, I would apply the glue and then I would slide the, the twig into the glue and it would, not only did it glue to the seahorse, but it glued to the twigs around it which was fantastic. I was very happy with that. So I'm just going to keep doing these twigs and I didn't try and do one like, like a big long one all the way across. I, I liked how it looked with, you know, kind of like laying bricks or whatever. You like that. There's different transitions. So I'm going to go ahead and do it all the way up here. I'm going to cover up the hole there because I don't need it. It's going to be on the background. And so I didn't want to show you too, too much, but um, I just wanted to make sure you saw the process. So if you choose to do it yourself, you can do it the same way. Okay, so once I'm pretty much done with this, I actually do set it aside because I do want to give the glue a chance to dry before I mess around with it. That's the only thing about like not using hot glue, like when you use wood glue or school glue, it does take a little while to dry and you, you need to be aware of that. Like uh, go and walk away or go and do something else while it's drying because you just don't want to like all your hard work, you know, for not. So this netting, I'd never seen it before and I had no idea how it was going to come out. And it's actually like wrapped around a piece of heavy plastic. So I just kind of pulled it across my tag, trying to figure out how much I need and trimmed off what I thought was a good amount. And then I remembered that I need to do some serious sanding on this tag. So I grabbed my netting and set it aside and I get to sanding so much here that my arm is sore and I am covered in <laughs> green and blue dust. So got up, washed up, and then came back to the netting. And uh, I fussed around with it, but then I just uh, glued um, the strings on the back and then trimmed them after. So glue first, trim second. 
And this one here, I made a little knot because I didn't feel like there was very much to glue there. I just wanted some surface area. And there we have it. The seahorse is home, and I will give you a better look at him at the final reveal. You reach the top five. Project number five is this bite of summer pizza pan wall hanging. It was made for a summer playlist, and one of the projects had to include food. This was made with a calendar page from the Dollar Tree calendars, and I thought it was just perfect. Project number one, take a bite of summer. I'm using the Dollar Tree calendar image and a Dollar Tree pizza pen and the rest of the supplies are from Amazon. So once I choose the image that I want, I prepare the pizza pan by sanding it, wiping it down with some rubbing alcohol, and then I'm just gonna do a sloppy coat of white on the outside rim and then a little bit on the inside. So there's the Farm Forge calendar. That's the name of the calendar that I'm taking the image from. And it has some really pretty images. You just take a moment to enjoy them here. Love that little bunny one. And I've already made something with this, this one, a tag sign. And here's our watermelon and this is our take a bite out of summer image. It says life is sweet, enjoy every bite. So there's my uh, painted and dried pizza pan and I'm gonna hold the image up and see if I can figure out, oh, hmm, is it gonna fit? I'm gonna cut some strips because I don't mind if there's a background showing in between them because it'll just look like shiplap, which is what the image looks like anyway. And after playing around with it, I do decide to put the text on the top and the bottom and not one under the other like I did there. There we go, that looks much better. Okay, so I set those to the side so they're not gonna get messy. And then I take my green, I think it's just regular green and spring green, don't quote me though. Um, I just go, I basically just swish, it's a stencil brush and I just swish it around it's got some nice long bristles and it paints really well a uh, wet brush will help the paint glide and if you get the lighter green on while the darker green is still wet it'll blend in it'll blend in together it's much easier to get them to blend if you do it that way all right now it goes a little south here not gonna lie i'm gonna show you it was much runnier than I thought it would be because it's in the bottom and I thought it would be kind of thick and bleh, but it's not. And I should have scooped some back, but I didn't. I like working with a much thinner coat when I do the heat decoupage, but I just tried to spread it as evenly as possible. I went, uh, had some dinner, watched a ball game, and then I came back and I just uh, cleaned up the pan just to make sure. There was nothing there, so when I decoupage, nothing shows up underneath. But talking about underneath, I'm going to show you something in a minute here, and don't gasp. I picked out some florals that matched, set those to the side, and now I flipped over my images, and what am I doing? I am dry brushing black paint. I don't have, <laughs> don't have a fit. It does not show on the front. However, it does camouflage the words and letters on the back because they do actually show through if you don't do this. Some people have put um, like a piece of black paper or uh, black cardstock, but I don't want my image to be thick underneath. I like the way it looks flat on the pan. So you, you'll see I, I do the parts where the letters and words are first and then I just kind of blend it in and it works fantastic it, it seems a little bit um out of the box but <laughs> it works so i get it placed down the way i want get my parchment paper on that's important get the flowers out of the way so they don't get melted or dirty 
and we're going to use the iron with no steam just a nice hot dry iron um, some people say don't move it i move it it doesn't seem to matter one way or the other as far as the results go and now i'm choosing a rope for the border a lot of people think rope is just embellishment but actually rope does a nice job of um, hiding the imperfections of the cut and just making everything look nice and clean that rope is actually a regular dollar tree rope that's had one part taken out so it looks kind of wavy still and i i had saved it you know not thinking what am i going to use it for but it looks really nice on this border and i also used it as a hanging rope now i have this nice burlap ribbon that i've had for quite a long time probably maybe a year and i didn't measure it i just sort of held it up to the top of the pie pan to get an idea of the size i made two loops and then I did an awareness bow and made a loop from the awareness bow. And then I did an X with the loops, put the awareness bow on top, hot glued everything together. And then I made the tails nice and short because I don't want to cover those words because my words are important. That's why I chose them. And then I just uh, have some uh, petunia and hydrangeas. The hydrangeas are the all over pink ones that are smaller. And I made little, just little bouquets and stuck them under the where the where the bow is. And look how pretty. Coming in at number four on the top fifteen list is this fall themed window hanging. I just love, love, loved this project. I'm not sure what it was about it, the color of the leaves, the the style but um, I zhuzhed up the bow, hung it on the inside board, door, and I just loved it every day that I saw it. Okay, this is Kiki's version of a fall theme window hanging, and project number three will be my version of a fall themed window hanging. So first I'm going to um, take off the plastic, and even though I like the wood grain finish on the frame, I decide to paint over it because it was a little drab. The frame took a couple of coats of paint and I wasn't striving for perfection because I know a lot of it is not even going to be visible when I'm done with it. Now I flipped it over. This is the back of the frame and I'm going to remove the little clips that keep the backing in because th those would probably stick out like a sore thumb. After I get rid of those, I'm going to try and flatten out my chicken wire as best as I can so it will attach to the frame more easily. And I'm going to use just a regular office stapler to attach it because the frame is, is pretty soft. Like, I don't think it's wood. I think it's like a dense foam. Um, and I'm using the regular office stapler, like you see. And... Uh, Afterwards, I'll put a bead of hot glue, and that's just to um, ensure it stays put, but also to uh, get rid of the pickies, like cover up the sharp points, because inevitably when I'm using chicken wire, I end up poking myself, as I do here in just a second. And we'll take a break and doctor up my finger and then get back to the project. All right, so I did have to trim a little bit off the edge there, but no biggie. If you have good wire cutters, it's not that difficult. Uh, once I had it trimmed to size, I pulled out my Dollar Tree burlap and lace ribbon. I love this stuff. This is just gonna go around the front and around the middle of the frame and then I'll hot glue it. And you'll notice um, if you looked at Kiki's version, she did like the crisscross uh, to make the window look like a real window, but I chose the chicken wire, you know, one, because I have a lot of it, and two, because um, I couldn't decide on how I would do the crisscross if I wanted to. So I like the chicken wire. I think it came out good. 
Here I'm going through all my leaves. I decided it'd be fun to do a bouquet just with leaves. And I chose the purple to be sort of the, the backing or the background for the bouquet. And then just uh, added them to my liking. I kept the I kept the trimming as long as possible, but I did trim them off the main picks and then made sure there was uh, something left to tie up with some of the Dollar Tree jute twine. And then to finish it off, I'm going to make a little bit of a majestic bow and it's pretty easy. I take, I do two loops and I make them about the width of the frame and then I cinch the loops in the middle and I make an X out of them. And then I tie those together with some twine. And then I'm just going to do an awareness ribbon bow where you hold, uh, where you place the ribbon into an awareness shape and then scrunch it together and make a bow. And then the awareness ribbon bow is attached to the little X from the loops. And that's good to go. Uh, to finish things off, I'm going to attach these little eye hooks to the top, just like Kiki did. And then just pull through some uh, Dollar Tree twine and hide the knot between the leaves. And I have a, a hanging that's not visible. And this came out fantastic. I really, really love it with just the leaves. And I'm going to give you a better look at it at the final reveal. Project number three is this scrap lumber pumpkins project they were a wayfair dupe but i made them my own and i ended up setting them out front outside the screen door and it's where the amazon drivers put my packages so every time i received a delivery notice with a picture the pumpkins were in the background and i just loved it so this is their version and my project number one is my version, and I call them Scrap Lumber Pumpkin Shelf Sitters. Three scraps of lumber, and mine are probably bigger than the Wayfair one, but it's what I had. Um, and I didn't. Ha what I didn't have is an orange I liked to paint my pumpkins, so I played around with some chalk paint and acrylic paint until I was happy with what I saw. And then I went ahead and did front, back, and sides of all three pieces and helped them along in the drawing process. Now I toyed with the idea of putting paper on these like in the original, but I didn't have any paper that had like an orange plaid. I had green plaid, blue plaid, pink plaid but no orangey plaid so i just decided to you know have some fun and do polka dots lines and um like little chevron lines on the third one so there's my little polka dot one all done and then um there wasn't any rhyme or reason to the width of the stripes, I just made them even. Like once I decided on one, I made sure that the rest of them were the same. I think it was like two, two strands of tape in between. And then it was like, oh my gosh, I was going to do wavy lines on this one. And uh, I wasn't sure how that would look. I felt like I needed like an in-between, something in-between lines and dots. So... I decided on this chevron shape and I think I'm using I actually think I'm using a broken foam paintbrush probably like um, I get them at the Habitat for Humanity store sometimes and the Dollar Tree sometimes but it uh, looks like it broke off the stick and I'm just using it as a sponge and it's working fine And I actually set these aside to dry and don't get to them until the next day. And the paint was a little cracked because maybe it was too thick, not a lot. And um, I decided to just go with it. In the meantime, with the painting set aside, I went ahead and cut three um, pumpkin stems out of this square dowel. 
and I just chose a length. I think it was like two inches or two and a quarter inches. I just happened to have this dowel. I saw it at the Habitat for Humanity store one time. And uh, I had all these round dowels, but never square dowels. So I thought these were pretty cool. And it's a whole 50 cents for that, like whole big long thing you saw. Um, and again, I didn't like the brown I had. So I put two browns together. And uh, sometimes I don't even bother mixing it because, you know, it's sort of like an organic, natural look because in nature, the colors aren't flat and one dimensional. So I tried to make it a little bit more natural. The These are paint sticks. I think they're 14 inch paint sticks. You can get the 21 in, 21 inch ones. Those are larger ones. And uh, you can use either one. It's uh, the tags, it's the word tags that's going to hang off of the stem and uh it's pretty cool i just did the typewriter font in cricut and when the paint sticks were dry i cut them to size with a utility knife and i made sure to leave some space at the beginning of the word so i could drill a hole to hang them off the pumpkin stem this is like my favorite part. The The word signs, the word takes are my favorite part of this whole project. I just think they're so cool. And it was really easy to do with the Dollar Tree twine that I had because it's really thin. And I, I just did a lark's head knot or um, a loop knot, I guess. I do that. I do it the exact same for all three of them. And now I finally got to unwrapping this pumpkin and I was pretty happy with how it came out. I decided not to fuss too much with uh, where it did bleed through. It, it, I just kind of softened it with the sandpaper you saw there. Um, but I decided not to bother painting in anything. And the same with the chevron. And it's not perfect. You can see the... The lines aren't totally parallel, but I think that's the whole fun of it. I decided to make mine more whimsical than the Waverly version. And it's not, it's not an excuse for not doing it right or perfect. It's just to make it fun and not obsess over perfection and details. Okay, so I used wood glue, hot glue, got those stems on there, and then... You see, I have the little curly cues. I guess I made those off camera. And I also dabbed some of that copper paint on them. And I decided on the gold leaves instead of the gold flowers. The original has gold leaves, just different shape, like with pointed edges. And I tried cutting these, but it made them too small. So I decided to leave them the natural size. And then just a whole lot of twine wrapped around the pumpkin stem because the original had a whole lot of twine wrapped around it. See, I'm trying to get a little bit close to the original. All right, once I wrapped it, I uh, hot glued it on the back. And that's how the first one is done. There's the tag on it, thankful. And I'll show you all three together during the final reveal. You've made it to number two. Thanks for staying with me. Project number two is this circle cutting board. It's another cutting board um, that made the top 15 list from a video I did with five cutting boards. This one is still uh, sitting out on a side table in my dining room and I'm still enjoying it. Project number four, circle board. We're using the same turquoise uh, cutting board that we used before with uh, rub-on transfers and paper doily. So uh, the wood round came from Amazon. and <laughs> You gotta remember to peel off that paper. Uh, I won't lie, I used it a couple times without taking the paper off and didn't work out. Anyways. Uh, we, we're going to glue the two together, and I don't know what glue is best to use, so 
I'm using three different kinds of glue here. If, if you're sure of what adheres the best between the plastic and the wood, then you do you. But I'm doing E6000 in the corners, super glue on the edges, and a couple of beads of hot glue in the middle. So that sucker better stay on there. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to flip it over and give it a coat of cottage white folk art chalk paint. And I can flip it over already. There we go. Okay, so um, a nice, solid, heavy coat of paint, no water. Um, and I think I give it two coats because um, I want to do a thick coat on the top as well. So I want it to completely hide the wood grain underneath. I want to just see the white part because for the transfers, I want it to be totally white underneath them. And that was a really crappy brush I was using. You see me pulling the little hairs of the brush off of the... Well, it's now a cutting board. <laughs> So let me just get that finished. Okay. And I thought it would be cool to um, create a border with the doily. Um, so I'm going to cut out the middle section and leave the, the board in the middle to put the transfer on. I believe this is, there's at least three or four different sizes of the doilies and they're from the Dollar Tree. I got them quite a long time ago. And I just lucked out that this one fit it, like, almost exactly. Um, I was anticipating having to cut the big one, like, cut it in pieces. Because I've done that before, but I just lucked out this time. Then once I, um, I, I move the paper instead of moving the scissors. That's what they always say, move the paper. And uh, I had very little trimming up I needed to do afterwards. Went straight into the Mod Podging. Super thin coat of Mod Podge only on the outside edges that will be underneath. Don't put any Mod Podge in the middle. And I'm not sure why. I just thought that I wanted the paint for the rub-on transfer. And again, if you prefer Mod Podge underneath your transfers, you do you. Um, I did Mod Podge just under the paper of the doily because the doily is made of paper and i didn't want to glue it i wanted it to be um adhered like completely so there wasn't a chance of it um getting ripped or torn or or rubbed off now this stencil i've seen quite a few youtubers use it it required a lot of tlc and I also noticed that little bits from the other stencils were um, sticking to the sticking to the board as well. And that's my bad. I should have remembered to put something underneath it. So I do do that. And the the little bits I was able to just scrape them off with my fingernail like slowly scrape them off. They weren't super noticeable, but they were noticeable to me. So this stencil, um, I'm using my Cricut tool and I had to rub it and then check it and then rub it and then check it. And you couldn't really do the whole thing and then pull it up. You really had to do each individual part of the stencil. So you couldn't just do the letters you couldn't just swipe it over the whole thing. You actually had to go in and do each little part of it. Um, like I said, just a little bit of TLC and just a little bit of patience and you get there. I'm not sure why I'm showing you so much of this. There we go. And there's only like a little couple of little tiny bits that didn't um, do it exactly and uh, it wasn't super noticeable and I kind of liked it added a tiny bit of rustic to it. So the rub-on transfer says flowers 
And strangely enough, I am not going to use flowers on this. I pulled some flowers, but I just didn't like how it looked for this particular style. Like, I felt like just using the greenery and the black and white was more farmhouse. So I just grabbed some eucalyptus from my stash and wired it together with some floral wire. And then that is going to hide where the handle and the circle board meet so it actually worked out because at first i w wasn't even going to put some something there um so that worked out fantastic and now i'm gonna make a finger bow i wrapped it around my four fingers oh a bunch of times um, some people prefer a less thick bow um i like mine kind of full but not super full so I hot glued that on there and then I took the same twine and wrapped it around loosely and pushed it down and glued it and then I wrapped it around tightly so that whole area was covered with the twine. And if I flip it over here, you'll see. And I'll give you a better look at the final reveal. And the number one project of 2022 is this salt and pepper holder made simply with a Dollar Tree crate cutting board and napkin. Not only do I love the look of this project, but it's probably one of the most useful things I have ever made. Thanks for staying with me and I'll see you in 2023. Project number one, salt and pepper crate. We're starting with the Dollar Tree bamboo cutting board, Dollar Tree napkins, Elmer's wood glue, Mod Podge, and uh, various tools and a sanding block. So preparing the cutting board by giving it a light sand. And that's just to help everything stick and adhere that we want to. Clean up the, the sawdust or sanding debris and then we're just going to do some quick uh, measurements and basically just um, making note of how much room the crate takes on the bottom of the cutting board so I can leave that blank. Um, the crate is going to get an all over coat of uh, acrylic brown paint except for the back where it's going to be adhered to the cutting board. So um, all the sides, all the insides, and uh, I didn't do the bottom. I didn't do the bottom and I didn't do the, the back that's gonna attach to the cutting board. So I'm being careful with the Mod Podge this time. Um, some of my loyal subscribers might remember that I had a little bit of trouble with it in my last video. So I tapped it out into the lid of the bottle and then, um, a lot of times I was just putting the Mod Podge on the foam brush here and a nice thin layer of Mod Podge, which is exactly what I wanted. So I set that aside to dry and I checked on the crate and the brown paint was dry. So I went ahead and did the white distress. Again, um, a pretty dry brush. I tap it out. And again, I did inside and outside except for the back and the bottom. Then I have the Dollar Tree, uh, I guess they call it a lunch napkin. I love the Dollar Tree napkins like this with the four images on it because a lot of times um, this size napkin only has the one image and then the rest is all white. So you get kind of cheated in the other napkins, but not this one. So Dollar Tree has upped their game as far as that's concerned. And I'm just ripping the image out and um, it gives like a better, like it adheres better, um, but I'm not sure why I ripped so much because I'm not painting the cutting board and I don't need it to blend in, but the the this type of um, tearing will help it adhere to the wood better, which is great. And um, I just, I went a, a tiny bit overboard with it. And it's on there, good and smooth, and I'm just gonna sand the edges and get a little bit of the overhang off. This is another thing I love about this method of decoupage, uh, sanding 
you don't have to do any cutting or trimming knives or scissors just a little bit of a sanding block and it just makes it so professional and high-end I'm going to use this gloss finish in fact I use it quite often I just forget to tell you guys about it but um, I like to use it instead of Mod Podge quite often because um, the Mod Podge leaves like brush strokes and smears and this gloss finish, I just do a light spray and I just like how it looks. And it doesn't look super glossy because I don't like cake it on. It's time to do the Cricut words now. And since this is a salt and pepper crate, I did salt in white vinyl and pepper in black. I know it's a little bit cheesy, but I thought it would be cool. So the white vinyl, um, this is brand new transfer tape in the white vinyl did not want to stick to it i'm not quite sure why but i just took my time and a little patience and i just kept holding it down with my little cricket tool there until it let me tear it off and then you see i had to push it down a little bit but then um pulling up the transfer tape really didn't give me too much trouble i, I was anticipating a little bit of uh, frustration but there wasn't any so i'm getting smart now I'm weeding the word after I take the background off. That way I'm not weeding it and gouging into the wood below it. So it's weeded and ready. I'm getting my transfer tape on, same piece of transfer tape, because you can use it quite a few times. In fact, it's usually better after a few times because super, super sticky just doesn't cut it sometimes. It just makes it more difficult. So we got pepper on there and it was like no problem <laughs> like the salt one gave me so much trouble to get it down and pepper was like totally fine so i'm just checking to make sure it's centered but i mean really i could have eyeballed it it looks okay and this is the back of the salt and pepper crate i'm just starting in the middle and pushing that word down and that seems to work. I, I read about that and I watched a few videos about that and they say start in the middle when you're pushing it down. So that's what I've been trying to remember to do. All right, flipping it over. The napkin is cool and dry and we can work on it without worrying about messing it up. So um, I like to do a couple of beads of the wood glue and then I'll do a bead of hot glue in the middle. I just uh, feel better about doing it that way instead of dots and circles and things. So this works for me. I get it on there and then I realized I needed to push it up a little bit. So I grabbed it and set it up vertically there. Make sure the crate and the bottom of the cutting board were even and they are. And I like how you can see the front the pretty napkin in the front or the words on the back that way no matter how the crate is sitting on the coffee table you're going to be able to see something cool so I'll give you a close-up there see what it looks like and i will also give you a better look at the final reveal don't forget to subscribe and give me a big thumbs up. See you soon.